This is a car that had won awards before it had even moved. 12 months ago, it was announced Cabriolet of the Year at the Geneva Motor Show. That's like giving Nicole Kidman the Oscar for Best Actress based on her passport photograph. But then again, that's understandable, because when it comes to posy open-top two-seaters, well, I'll tell you what, the Italians have a good word for it, bellezza, which roughly translated means you would. It's the Alfa Romeo Spider, essentially a cabriolet version of the Brera Coupe, with a few key alterations. Those of you with rulers in your eyes will have already noticed that it's a bit shorter and a bit lower, and those of you with just eyes will have noticed there's no ceiling. That's good, because I have a bit of a problem with the Brera, and this, incidentally, with the roof up, in that I don't fit. I'm just over six feet tall, and generally I have to drive them either like this... <laughs> or like this. Neither of which is a particularly elegant solution. In the spider, however, it's obviously not a problem. If you speak to people down the pub, or even here in Morocco, they'll tell you about Alpha's terrible old reputation. In particular, that habit of rusting so quickly, the cars were actually classed as water-soluble. Alpha seltzer, if you will. But we're heading for the Sahara, where it hasn't rained for ages, so I think we're safe. The pub bores would also tell you that Alphas are terribly, terribly unreliable. But I've never understood that. It's like saying you're not going to date Nicole Kidman, Oscar winner, because she's not very punctual. I mean, come on, live dangerously. Mind you, we are heading towards the Sahara Desert, where a breakdown would be, uh, sweaty. this engine, but not especially for its performance. It's a 3.2 litre V6 with 260 brake horsepower, which means it punts the Spider to 150 miles an hour and gets to 62 in seven seconds. Thing is, that's over a second slower than an Audi TT dropped off. But it does sound husky and sexy and gives this car a real definite character. At just over £31,000, this isn't a cheap thrill. There's a 2.2-litre petrol version available that'll save you five grand, but given that's only got 185 brake horsepower, I doubt it actually moves. One day soon, a 2.4 diesel will join the range, although whether you can bring yourself to drive a beautiful roadster that clacks and clatters like a tractor is a different matter. See, if you chop the top off a car, it's the old problem. You lose all torsional rigidity and they start flopping around like seals on heat. Alpha reckon that they've made this spider 25% stiffer than the car that went before it. All I need now is some bends. They look nice. and ragged. It's absolutely all over the place. Whoa! Thing is, it's got really good bits. The steering's nice and quick. It's very fast at 2.25 turns off the lock. But unfortunately, a sharp turning like that accentuates the fact that the car rolls a lot, so it feels like it's diving into all the corners. The V6 is badged Q4, signifying four-wheel drive. But it's really there as a way of controlling the power and doesn't really make this into a fun car to chuck about. No wonder it's got ASR and VTS and DSG and all the rest of the kind of electronics, because it bloody needs them.
Who's your favourite presenter on Fifth Gear? Me? Yes. You into F1? 